Water is the primary limiting factor to cultivation in Africa's dry land, but soil fertility comes a very close second. Cultivation without returning nutrients impoverishes the soil, and selective erosion washes away rich particles from fields. With continuing urbanization, more nutrients are exported from rural areas and they don't return. The result is a net loss of fertility. In sub-Saharan Africa, the average nutrient loss is about 50 kilograms per hectare per year. Currently, fertilizer replaces only 20% of that. Traditionally, farmers relied on fallow periods to revive the soil. Now, the land gets no rest. So what are the options for better fertility management? In Burkina Faso, farmers turn organic waste into a resource through composting. Projects have succeeded in stimulating adoption. People continue to construct compost pits, even without help from the project because they know the importance and added value of this organic manure in their fields. Salimata Sankara has been composting for more than 15 years. There are many benefits. Before the land was dry, it had lost its fertility. When I started with this practice, on an area of two hectares, I could harvest only two to three carts of sorghum. But now, even on just one hectare, I can get double the quantity, five to six carts. And Bremo Wadrogo has gone further, developing an integrated approach. He realizes that composting reduces reliance on external inputs. Including animals in the farm helps. As long as manure and urine is collected and composted. But organic composts and manures can't sustain the land alone. Inorganic fertilizers are needed to fill this gap. A combination is best. Fertilizers supply nutrients, while organic inputs replenish carbon-rich soil organic matter. Precision microdosing of fertilizers is a new way to optimize impact and reduce costs. Jacques Sawadogo supervises a microdosing project in Burkina Faso. Microdosing means applying a small quantity of fertilizer in the planting hole at the time of sowing or after the emergence of the crop. For sorghum, the microdose is 2 grams per planting pit. For millet, it is 3 grams. And for maize, it is 4 grams per planting pit. For cowpeas, 2 grams is best. The microdose has multiple benefits. First of all, by reducing the quantity applied, farmers save money as fertilizers are very expensive. Secondly, the microdose increases yields significantly, even three times as much as before. It really raises production. Thirdly, farmers do not need to cultivate large areas. A smaller area is sufficient to produce for their family's needs, to provide food for their family. When farmers practice microdosing, there are surpluses of grain. They save this at their cereal bank in the form of credit. On the basis of their credit, they can get money to invest in income-generating activities. A farmer field school in each village helps with training. These schools without walls allow farmers to learn from each other. New practices are demonstrated. In this case, microdosing. Farmers learn to compare the impact of improved technologies on their crops. Seeing is believing, and results in the field have convinced many to take up the practice of microdosing. In the villages, 
Farmers also prepare compost and apply it to their zai planting pits. There are many ways to keep the soil in good shape for the future. Fertility management plays a crucial role in achieving food security and in building up the health and resilience of the agricultural ecosystem as well. It's achieved through mutually supporting practices, not just composting and microdosing, but rotations with nitrogen-fixing legumes, use of agroforestry trees, and bringing animals into the system. Integrated soil fertility management means caring for the land. It can only continue producing food if nutrients are replenished in return.